If you're looking for a compact SUV, there is yet another contender heading to Australia in the Citroen C3 Aircross. Now, of course, it is based on the standard C3, but it is 20 millimeters higher, I guess, to make it an SUV. It's a pretty good looking car. It's got a lot of practical features. And let's get inside and have a look at them now. So my favorite feature of this car is actually the practicality of the seats. Now, of course, you've got rails, so these move back and forward, but also both the front and the rear passenger seats fold flat. So, for example, you pull this all the way down. You pull this all the way down. So, you go to Ikea, or if you've got a surfboard, no problem. So yes, it does have very practical seats and the interior is quite quirky, especially if you option it up properly. But the real point of this car is inner city urban driving. And for that, you get a 1.2 liter engine. It's a three cylinder engine, uh, but it's got a reasonable amount of power torque, uh, 81 kilowatts, 230 Newton meters, six speed automatic transmission, a proper one, uh, not some robotized manual as we've seen previously. So it is a very smooth drive. Look, if you're buying this car, you've got to compare it to cars like the Mazda CX-3, the Subaru XV, and the Mitsubishi ASX. I personally think this is a much funkier car. It's the sort of car that will definitely stand out against those competitors. And when it shows up around March, April next year, I think if you're looking for something in that category, but don't want to be like everybody else, this really is something worth considering. But you do have to pay for that uniqueness, and that comes in terms of its retail price, which is going to be around thirty dollars to $35,000. The actual official price hasn't been announced yet. Nonetheless, for that cost, you do get AEB, you get high beam, you're going to have forward collision, blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning systems, you get a 7-inch infotainment screen, you even get a head-up display, which is pretty nifty, and I guess in that way it's similar to the high-spec CX-3. So in terms of driving it day to day, I think this engine is more than adequate for what you'll need to do in the, in the city and even on the highway, even if you want to go for long distances. Um, the good thing is it actually rides quite nicely. I'm, I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. We've taken it through some relatively poor roads here and, and I think so far it's performed pretty well. It doesn't have the tricky suspension uh, that we're going to see with some of the new Citroen, so it's just you know standard suspension. However, it is pretty good and for the price, I don't think you'll be disappointed. But it's not all perfect. There are some, what I would call, stupid features in the car. There is this giant dial down here that you can turn to change the off-roading modes for the car. You can put it into snow, uh, you can put it into going downhill or, or mud. And I mean, it's a front-wheel drive car, so God knows why you need that dial. What you actually need down here is the air conditioning system because the only way to control that aircon is through this screen here. And frankly, I find that rather distracting whilst driving. Ultimately though, it is a pretty decent little SUV. It's for those that want to be a little bit different and just have a car that your next door neighbor or the one down the road doesn't have. I like it, it's got a lot of character, it looks amazing from the outside and there's a lot of great practical bits inside. So look, if you're willing to wait till March, April next year, it's definitely worth considering.